In today's video, I wanted to demonstrate the different SK physics joints available in SpriteKit. So we have a couple different joints we can use, springs, ropes, sliding mechanisms, pinning together, and fixed joints as well. So I'll walk through some of the code, the basic setup, and how we set up the scene, and then the different joints available. So for the basic setup, I created a player SK sprite node and gave it a move speed and a jump speed so we can move around the scene and gave it a texture as well as a physics body. And I created a hook joint class, which is what the player will grapple onto essentially with these joints. And this also is an SK sprite node with a texture and a physics body. This time we set is dynamic to be false and affected by gravity to be false because we just want this node to, to be pinned in the scene and not be moved around by the different forces. And now let's take a look at our game scene. So I created a player and hook joint constant that we'll use, and then I created one of each of the different SK physics joints that we'll use and toggle between. So we have a spring, limit, slide, pin, and fixed. Those are the five different joints available to us in SpriteKit. I also created a little platform, which is the terrain, and then borders on the top left, bottom, and right so that the player will not fall out of the scene. And finally, we have a selected joint, so you can use the keyboard to change between the joint types and experiment with them. And this is an enum, which I have below. In our did move function, we want to add the physics world contact delegate to be ourself, and then add our child, which is the player and the hook joint and then set our hook joint position and set up our camera and finally build our borders. So if we go to our build borders function, this is just an extension of game scene. And all I did here was set up the terrain and borders, giving them physics bodies and then adding them to the scene. Same thing with our set camera function. It's just setting the camera and setting the scale to be one. And as you see below here, I also have our enum for the joint type, and we have one for each different joint type. So let's scroll back up a little bit here. In our key down function, this is essentially whenever we push a button on the keyboard, I have different cases for the different buttons that are pressed. So case zero and case two corresponds with the A and D keys on the Mac keyboard. So when we press the A key, we will apply a negative X velocity based on the player's move speed to the character. And same thing with D for a positive move speed. And for the Y component of the CG vector, I just leave it as the player's current Y velocity to preserve their Y velocity. Cases 18, 19, 20, 21, and 23 correspond with 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 on the keyboard. So I will change whichever SK joint we're using, and then case 49 corresponds with the spacebar. So whenever the spacebar is pressed, we will apply a vector again to the velocity of the player body, preserving the X portion. So if they're already moving in the X direction, we'll preserve that. And then the Y portion will just be the player jump speed. So that's it for keys down. Now let's work on the mouse portion. Let's scroll up here to when the left click is set, which is left touch down. So we're just going to do a switch statement to check whichever joint we have selected from the keyboard and then create an SK physics joint. Each physics joint has its own special properties and let's work with the spring joint first. So for our spring joint, we have to connect it with a body A and a body B, which in this case, the body A wants to be the one that is stuck or fixed. So that's going to be the hook joint. Body B will be the player physics body. Anchor A, again, will be whichever anchor joint that we're using. So that's the hook joint. And then anchor B will be just the player's position because we want to apply the joint at wherever the player was when they clicked. And we have damping and frequency. From Apple's notes, we see the default value for damping is zero. And increasing the value increases the energy loss. So there will be fewer oscillations with the spring the higher this value is. Frequency defines the stiffness of the spring. So the higher a value that we set it to, the stiffer the spring joint will be. With your default value of zero, you have a rigid joint, which basically acts like a rope or a fixed joint. 
So let's run this with just our standard one and one and see what it looks like. So we move our character around. We have one selected for our spring. And if we click, if I jump or try to apply a force, you see it, it is a little bit springy. The player ball is trying to get back to the joint, but it can't quite. And then if you get too close, it will be pushed back. So let's set our frequency to 10 and see what happens. You'll see it's rather stiff. It's not bouncing around quite as much. When I'm applying forces or trying to jump, it acts more like a rope. Let's set it to 100. Definitely acts like a rope now. And speaking of rope, the next joint that we'll look at is the SK physics joint limit. So this one acts exactly like a rope would. So again, you have your body A, your body B, your anchor A, and your anchor B for this particular joint. And then the only property that you have available to work with is the max length. Press 2 to switch to our rope. And if I come down here to the bottom left and click, you'll see the ball races up to be to that 300. But you'll also notice that we can go a minimum distance, so we can go inside that 300. We have the slide joint available as well. Again, body A, body B, anchor joint, and then the axis that you want to freeze them on. So in this case, I only want the sliding joint to go on the X axis. And you'll see we have and should enable limits. You can set that to be false or true. In this case, we have a lower and an upper distance of being negative 100 and 100. So let's just take a look. So we'll press three to switch to our slide. There's no limits right now on what the minimum distance is. So we can slide as much as we want here. But if we change this to be true, Now we only have 100 pixels to work with for sliding. And if we change this to, let's say, negative 100, run it. You'll see we have a Y component now to our sliding. And now we have pin joint. So this is a joint that pins together two bodies, allowing independent rotation. We do have some extra properties to work with, which would be our lower angle limit, rotation speed, friction torque, should enable limits. I'm not going to worry about these for right now, since we're not doing any kind of rotation, but I will show you at least the pin joint. So it acts like a rope in this scenario. But if I come back here and go to our hook joint and let's set dynamic to be true, run this again and switch to our pin joint, you'll see now the two are pinned together. So it creates some interesting interactions that we can work with. And now let's set our pin joint for the anchor to be cg point zero dot zero and just see what that does so that creates more interesting interactions they're both rotating around that zero dot zero point And finally, we have the fixed joint. Fixed does not have any special properties, so if we do fixed dot, you'll notice there's no special properties here to work with. According to Apple's documentation, the physics joint fixed is good for fusing two physics objects together at a reference point that you maybe want to break apart later. So if we run this in our scenario, the two bodies get fixed together, and 
they cannot move independently unless we let go and delete the joint. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. Hit the like button, comment, and subscribe. And let me know in the comments section if you have any ideas for what you'd like to see regarding these joints or maybe future games. And I, ha I do have a couple ideas as well that I want to work on, but it would be nice to get your input as well. So thanks again and have a great rest of the day.